morning and welcome to The Coding Train with me, your host, Coding Train Person. <laughs> I do have a name, it's Dan. <laughs> and we begin, as we always begin, with the ceremonial reading of <coughs> today's random numbers. Coding Train today is brought to you by the random numbers 59,194, 9,027, 95,922, 55,416, 24,241, um, 80,080. This, this is when I look at the chat. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong chat channel <laughs> to see if like there's anything terribly wrong going on. Uh, let me switch here. Oh, it's so hard to use a computer. Ah, there we go. Brand L Max says, hello everyone. By the way, I'm looking at the Discord chat, uh, which is for uh, disc uh, members of the coding train, but I also see the YouTube chat where I see 94,930 from Arnav. Uh, oh, Arnav sends another random number, 70,948. <coughs> I wonder if we had, <coughs> you know, a random number for every person, if every person uh, watching uh, 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 thought of a random number between 0 and 99,999, in inclusive of that, um, <coughs> what the distribution would be and whether we would have a, um, a good random number, pseudo random number generator, random number generator or not. Interesting question, interesting theory. I, am I out of focus? I thought I was on focus. Everything is definitely on fire. The roof, the roof. <coughs> is uh, above, above, it's up there. I'm a bunch of floors up. I guess if the roof is only technically the top of the building, I mean, there's a ceiling, that's not really a roof. <coughs> no, says Oliver. Once again, I will remind everybody watching that when you say yes or no as if you were replying to me, I have no idea what you're talking about because it happens about 30 seconds later. And my memory, apparently, my short-term memory is not nearly that long. Ah, I forgot to wash my glasses. It's very important that I wash my glasses before I live stream because there's these very bright lights which reflect in them, which is a problem. I need to get some anti-reflective uh, lenses. But also, as soon as those lights come on, if there's like a little bit of dirt and smudge on my glasses, I can't see anything. <coughs> Better refocus. Yeah, why is that? All right, so let's try using the random digits book. I thought I focused. Can this book possibly prop itself up? Oh, by the way, this is a uh, YouTube show live stream thingy-mabob where I code stuff and talk about things and I'm still on a little machine learning kick. So that's what's happening today. Let me see if I can fix this focus because I cannot uh, be in two places at once. <laughs> One of these days maybe I'll get a, like a robot assistant to be in here and focus the camera for me. It's so weird. I could have sworn I focused it. Uh, I think this random number book is not very good for helping me focus. <laughs> in more ways than one. <sighs> Better? I can't tell. Let's go with my, ah, wait, wait, wait. Let's try my other special focus device. Oh, except for the fact that it's trans. All right, I'm just going to have to go with my usual um, Elgato Stream Deck <laughs> box. Not a sponsor. Today's sponsor, by the way, is Audible. Uh, if you go to audible.com slash coding train or text coding train to 500-500, <gasps> you can get a free audiobook. You can listen to a free audiobook, and I'm listening to one right now, which is called You're a Thing, I Love You by Janelle Shane. I'm going to talk about that book. It's an amazing AI book. Um, or you can also text coding train to 500-500. I love Audible. It's so wonderful to listen to books when I'm on the subway and jogging and all that stuff. So I will come back and talk about that. Uh, I do also love Stream Deck, although they are not a uh, sponsor, so I don't have a link for you. But I do have a link for you, audible.com slash coding train. All right, let me see if I can focus the camera now on this. <laughs> you would think, I did this. I, I, do, I have my list of things to do before I start. Focusing the camera is one of them. That looks good. I also want to take a, a if, I think this is better now. I still, I feel like I look out of focus. Tell me if I'm okay. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm not okay. This is clear. I have got lots of issues. Many, 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 many issues. I'm okay. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. I'm okay. My life is fine. <laughs> um, but I am very much out of focus in so many ways, literally and figuratively. <laughs> But hopefully I'm literally in focus right now. If somebody in the uh, member channel under live chat in the Discord could let me know, that would be super helpful. If I'm not, I will fix it. I, I might like want to take just a short break to go clean my glasses. <laughs> All right, I think we have a new member who just joined. Scott Bauer. <clears throat> Related maybe to Jack Bauer? No, that's a, like a lame. You're probably going to unmember, right? You should definitely just like cancel your membership that I made some sort of like lame, ridiculous joke. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about what I'm going to do today, which is um, examine something called convolutional neural networks. Uh, David says I'm good. Uh, that reminds me, I'm going to uh, show a community contribution from David, which should be a fun little experiment. It's okay, but not perfect. Um, let me uh, mention the Discord, um, just because I'm going to take like a second here. So um, this is the new Coding Train um, Discord. This is the All Aboard channel. So if you join the Coding Train Discord, um, you are required to read this the welcome me message and the code of conduct, um, which is here. I'll also note like I get a ton of questions on the videos. Uh, which I appreciate the comments and I do scan through all of them and I try to reply here and there when I can. But if you're looking for coding help, uh, two places for you. One is the, um, that I'll mention first, is the uh, processing uh, discourse. Um, so if you go to the Processing Foundation uh, forum, which is at discourse.processing.org, if you have a processing or P5 specific question, A, search this forum. It's probably been asked and answered, <laughs> but you can also ask it here. This is a great uh, place. But if you're something, if you want to, uh, if you're interested in Discord or something more coding train specific, um, this is a great place to get help. Um, and you can see the different channels here we have um, HTML and CSS, P5 processing. Oh, I have to sneeze. You want my mic? <coughs> okay, mute my microphone. Um, node for uh, server-side stuff, uh, machine learning, Python, which uh, eh, not my area of expertise. Uh, get not, not that any of this is really my area of expertise. Maybe processing. If I had one area of expertise that I might actually claim, it would be uh, processing. So uh, if someone could post, is anybody a moderator currently in the chat who can post the Discord link? If not, oh wait, I can, I can. I'm going to do that right now. I should get a button. I have a button actually right here, which whenever I press it, uh, it posts choo choo to the chat. I probably should have that post like the Discord link. <laughs> or I can make another button. Let me see if I can get that to work. Um, so I am going to go over here to uh, useful links. So this is where I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to show you where I'm going, but I'm doing it on a different computer. Um, useful links here, which these are all the uh, various coding train links that you might be interested in. I'm going to grab this uh, Discord. Uh, link. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to paste it into the chat just so it's there. Then I am going to go to my, um, where am I going to? My stream deck. And I'm going to go down to YouTube, 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 and put in chat message. Discord, call it Discord. Oh, I have so many keyboards and buttons. Then I'm going to paste the link here to the Discord. And uh, I think now, if I just hit save, any time I want, <laughs> I am, I don't know, I'm afraid to say this name because <laughs> I feel like there might be something hidden in there that I'm not aware of. So I'm not really thinking he is going to code in the next few minutes. And you would be right! You are the winner of a trip for two on the coding train. Choo choo! And you'll also get, with your trip for two on the coding train, random numbers. 
<coughs> what was I doing? Oh, welcome, Japs! Thanks, Japs, for joining the coding train. You're welcome aboard on the coding train. I should take like an improv class or something because I'm absolutely terrible at this. With your coding train membership, you will receive in the mail stickers. <clears throat> Much love from Tanzania, Africa. Thanks, Scott. Welcome aboard to the coding train with your super chat message. You will now receive a reading from the coding train notebook. <clears throat> Nothing written in here. I don't have anything to read. I, I, I. Okay. <clears throat> I was doing something. I'm testing this button. Did it work? I pressed the button. Ah, I posted a link to the Discord. So um, let me just quickly mention a couple other things in here. Um, under uh, store. Um, Oh no, wrong, wrong link, wrong link. Ah, Discord, you failed me. I guess I should edit that. I, this is the new, so that's the old store. I mean, it actually still exists. I might take it down, I don't know. But this is the new store. Um, I just wanted to mention that there are um, Coding Train hoodies uh, available. I would really like one of these. So this is my pitch to you. Um, these are uh, expensive to make. I'm not using a print on demand. Uh, service anymore. Standard.tv helped me design and produce this merchandise, which I'm told is uh, high quality. Um, and so this, they're going to do actually a print run of these. Uh, so I don't know what the process is, but um, so it's only taking three orders. So if people don't order them, they won't get made. I've already ordered a whole bunch for myself. Maybe I've ordered enough that it'll get made, but that's my pitch to you. Uh, if, you if you want me to see me wearing one of these, which I would like to, I'm wearing my ITP camp hoodie right now, then um, other people need to order them. And there's other stuff here if you're interested. Standard.tv. I don't have a button to post that in the chat. Okay. Uh, so I am, I, you know, I'm I want to get started uh, sooner than later or not. Uh, I mean, all of this is goofing off on some level, but not waste, not, I want to get started with the content because I'm a little bit behind on all the things I want to do. And next week is nature of code time. So I need to move on from some of the machine learning stuff, although I it will circle back to it because some of the stuff in Nature of Code towards the end uh, uses AI. Um, but um, so I'm going to do as much as I can today on some of the ML5 stuff that I've been doing and see where I get. Um, thank you, Oliver, for posting the store link in the chat. Um, and that's that. Um, so if you will um, bear with me, I'm going to go <laughs> wash my glasses. It should just take a minute. And I'm going to put on uh, intermission animation. <laughs> This is not actually the intermission, though. There will be an intermission about an hour to an hour and a half in. Oh, God, that is so loud. back. Sorry about that. I, I just was thinking I might be the first person in the history of universe in the universe to say wash my glasses. Maybe I'll say clean my glasses. Wash? Who washes their glasses? Yes, I went down to the lake with my washing board. <clears throat> All right. I'm 
am I in focus? If I come up close, I think I'm in focus. I guess it's just like a tight focus for the camera. Um, all right. So uh, one more thing I wanted to attempt to do, um, which is I always like to show community contributions. Um, I'm going to go to coding challenges, uh, GAR IO. The new one came in from David, um, which is here. So tic-tac-toe with friends. Um, so I would like to return to doing um, more, uh, uh, some more content and, and examples with WebSockets, which is a way of having um, <coughs> a, a way of having a continuous real-time uh, network connection from uh, the browser from JavaScript. Um, and I did a shared whiteboard and. Um, I, really, I swear, I look out of focus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna examine that again. Um, I did a shared whiteboard. I did this sort of agario, agara.io. I don't know how to say it. Um, example, and uh, let's look at this. And then I did a tic-tac-toe challenge. I didn't do that. Let's take a look. So my name is uh, Coding Train, and then I don't know if this matters, but I'm gonna just not show you the secret code I'm going to put in to join the game in case that makes it like sort of hackable in some way. So now I'm put, pasting in that code. I'm hitting join game. Join game. Oh, I don't see where. Oh, there is no open game. Did I already join it? Hello? Uh-oh. Oh, wait, I'm in it. I'm in it. OK, laptop, come back. All right, I'm now in the game. Uh-oh. X is turn. I'm O. Uh-oh, it's gone again. We found a bug. <laughs> I failed. I failed. Yeah, the focus is off. Is it just like drifting the focus? Let's try one more time. Where did I put my focus device? It's weird. I could put it onto autofocus. I thought that that's going to cause more problems than, um, oh, and I'm, oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yes, I'm so not, this is, uh, this is weird. Okay. Yeah, I can see that it's out of focus. Try fixing it. I think that's better. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Sorry, David. I uh, messed up. <laughs> Please, you know, I can see your message in the Discord. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll try again later. But you should uh, uh, make your community. Let's see. I don't think the so the latest video I released, by the way, is under the ML5 Beginner's Guide uh, playlist, um, and it should be down here. ML5 Pose Regression. Um, I don't think there are any. Oh, there are. Oh, you know what? This is a mistake. Actually, here's a bug. Bug report. <laughs> I'm not sure why this happened. Um, but this particular video, uh, ML5 pose regression, and uh, this pose classifier one. Oh, no. No, no, no. No. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. They're showing the same community contributions. So there is a way for that. That's supposed to happen. <laughs> um, and, and actually, so is this one. Maybe that's OK, actually. So maybe that's the point. So maybe the all of the pose videos should have the same community contributions. That's an open, so now I don't know if that's a bug report. That's an open question. Am I in focus or not? I have to resolve this. In Where is the focus? Does this look more in focus? Am I getting more or less in focus as I come forward? From like, this is back. 
middle forward, middle back. Where is the focus the best, worst, or am I just like way all too much in my head and I'm fine? <laughs> oh, it's really going well today. I'm trying to give myself a reference point as to where the top is. I was expecting some messages about the focus, but I didn't get any. <laughs> That's why I was like, let me go do the whiteboard for a minute. You got blurred. I mean, I, um, I saw like a math blank was typing and sarcasm as a service was typing, but then no messages appeared. Um, I'm going to give this one more shot. Is this, can I focus on, I have an idea, I have an idea. Let me try the train whistle. I really need to figure out, <laughs> I tripped, I need to figure out how to zoom the camera in. Used to, uh, like, I don't know what button will do that for me on this camera. I'm like looking really closely at the screen. That's way out of focus. Maybe that's good. Way out of focus. I used to be able to zoom the camera way, 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 way in. And then on the confidence monitor, I could really see it. Is this better? Okay, that's out of focus. I'm going to get this. <laughs> I mean, a soft focus might be good for me. I think that's a little bit better. I can come over here. No, that's like totally blurry. So weird. What is going on? I'm losing my mind. <sighs> this always happens to me. Something 
is weird with the camera today. I think some settings changed on this camera. I wonder if somebody changed, so people have been using this room and maybe settings got changed. Hold on, let's see, is it auto-focusing? Oh, it's on autofocus. <laughs> so the camera got changed. Somebody changed the setting. It's on autofocus. I, oh, maybe I'm not. Oh, I'm not scrolled all the way down on Discord. Oh, I'm not scrolled all the way down. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> I'm not scrolled. All right, so I've determined the problem. This, this room has been used. And the camera settings were changed. Ah! <laughs> right? I'm not crazy. It's auto Is it autofocusing on me? Yeah, I know everybody's saying you want me coding, but I, I have a problem and I have to address it. Yeah, it's auto-focusing, right? So how do I change it back to manual? Uh, I can't see the back of the camera. I don't know what to do about this. It's All right, caution to the wind, everybody. Little I'm just gonna go, I just gotta go for it. A little behind the scenes action here. So I can see the camera settings. And also really test this autofocus theory. Focus. All right, I'm going to switch it to manual focus. Uh, menu. It says manual focus. I was wrong about that. Oh, this is autofocus. <laughs> this is what autofocus looks like. <laughs> Maybe I should try it on autofocus. It was not on autofocus. I'm really interesting. I think I need to go to the eye doctor. I'm the worst. Let's actually just try it on autofocus for a second. I'm not going to tighten it in place. This is definitely, this is now autofocus. Does it do a good job of finding me in autofocus? So let's just pre pretend I'm coding for a little bit. Like I'm walking around and I'm talking. Ah, I'm talking about the coding. I'm type, type, type in the coding. Type, type, type in the coding. Hey, it's on autofocus. Is that actually like sort of staying in focus as I move around and talk, talk, talk about the code stuff? I feel like actually the autofocus looks pretty good. <laughs> autofocus or the win. Um, I'm going to wait for the, um, the, uh, says Ben. Brand L Max. Simon does not like the autofocus. 
Um, no, it's blurry as hell. So the autofocus was not good. It seems to be good when I'm up here. People, I really do, I, really, I, do, I realize everyone's having fun in the chat. I really need help with this because um, I can't both stream and see, and I haven't had this issue before, and I can, I have to, to change the settings on the camera, I have to pull it all the way out from the wall, which is not a great setup. Oh, Brand L Max saying it was good, okay. <clears throat> I mean, the camera's in the wrong place. So the moving is not an issue um, because the moving is, um, it's because I didn't tighten it. So that I'm not worried about. It is um, a little bit up now, so I can do this. And um, let me, I need to get the level. Only if you're not in screen that jumps around. It's on autofocus right now, which is what I think I'm going to do. I mean, so let me just level the camera, which is not level right now. Which way is level? This way? level. Loosen it actually again so I can come down and actually that's actually better for it to be pointed up a little bit more because I can raise the desk. Thank you all for bearing with me. I'm tightening it in place. I think I have to get started. I'm sorry, everybody. Ugh. We were having fun till I ruined everything. It's on autofocus now. I can't believe someone just joined. <laughs> uh, interesting. It does seem to. Um, it's asking me to. Uh, why is it showing me the audio mixer? Oh my God, what just happened? <laughs> okay. I have it locked. What did it just do? Oh, I'm so in focus right now. I'm losing my mind. I'm very, very in focus. And if I move over here, I'm still in focus. All right, this is good. 
I think if I'm still, and which I am for most of the time, it focuses um, better. All right, I, I have to give up on the focus, and this is just going to be good enough. Um, am I about the same size as I usually am? I just randomly change it. Well, that doesn't really matter because, um, yeah, I do see the laptop moving around. I think, though, if I stay mostly, I mean, I do move around a lot, but I don't um, move around a lot. I don't know what just changed, but it's like totally in focus now. Um, interestingly, I do think that maybe some of the settings on the camera did change, and I will um, investigate that at some point. All right. Ugh. Let me mention, I'm going to get started. I, I apologize to everyone. It's t I can't believe it's 10.15, but I do have two hours left, <laughs> so it should be time for me to do some stuff. Um, I do want to mention one thing, which is that... Um, I did make another coding in the Cabana video about the Hilbert curve. So if you were uh, waiting for that, stay tuned. Um, I programmed this particular uh, continuous space filling curve. Um, it's, it makes a lovely example. I also did something where I used um, the alpha version of processing four. There's a, you're a little too high. <laughs> There's a purple line at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 thank you. That's, that's easy to fix, positioning-wise. Um, oh, weird. I'm less concerned with that stuff because, Mathieu, when we edit, we can uh, fix that. But I think I have now fixed it. Okay. All right, <laughs> putting everything to side, I am now going to talk about convolutional neural networks. Oh, my brain was such in the headspace for this, and I've lost it a little bit. Looking here, um, okay, yeah, these are the, these are the links I'm interested in, um, and these are some slides that I'm maybe going to use, um, and this is the example I made before, um, and then looking for is this particular post. This is a really excellent one. N uh, yes, this is the one. Oh, this was the diagram. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. The focus is like better than it's ever been. I'm so focused. I am focused on the task at hand. I, mean, I always get this thing where people say, and, I, and Ashwin just said it, 
that I look like a character from a show called Money Heist, which I have never watched. Maybe I need to watch that. Or maybe I just act like that character. I don't know. <laughs> Hello and welcome to... <laughs> Hello, welcome to another beginner's guide to machine learning with ML5JS video. And in this video, I am going to talk about something called a convolutional neural network. <laughs> what is a convolutional neural network? What are the new operations in a convolutional neural network that are different from the kinds of neural networks we've looked at and I've talked about before? And how can this particular example, which I made in a previous video that just takes the pixels of an image, feeds them into a plain neural network, so to speak, a not a convolutional neural network. What would happen if I changed it to a convolutional neural network? Would it perform better? What would, what, what, what are the outcomes? <laughs> That's the point of this video that I'm making. <sighs> let me start by looking at, um, let me start by diagramming the kinds of neural networks let me start by diagramming the neural networks that I've used before. <laughs> Let me start by diagramming the neural networks that I've used in some of my. Um, <laughs> Let me start by diagramming what the neural networks looked like in, with ML5 neural network to date in, all, in the videos that I've made. So there's been uh, two layers a hidden layer and an output layer. And then also there's some data coming into the neural network. And in this case, in the previous example, it was an image which was flattened. So I used the example of 10 by 10 uh, pixels, each with an R, a G, and a B. So that made an array of, um, of 300 inputs. Uh, all these all these pixel values, those are the inputs, and those go into the hidden layer. <clears throat> but just for the sake of argument, let me simplify this diagram, and I'm just going to consider an example with four inputs. I'm going to consider that example as having five hidden nodes, hidden units. And then uh, it's, let's say it's a classification problem and there's three uh, possible categories. A vanilla, no, sorry. A st the ML5 neural network by default creates, a, a, right. so this has four inputs, three outputs, and five, I don't know if I need that. So when I call the function ML5 neural network, it creates this architecture behind the scenes and connects every single input to every hidden unit and every hidden unit to each output. Wait, hi. So this is what the neural network looks like. Each one of these connections has a weight associated with it. Each neuron receives the sum of all of the previous inputs to it in the previous, sorry, each, <coughs> each unit rec receives the sum of all of the inputs times the weights passed through an activation function, which then becomes the output, which then all of those with those weights are summed into the next layer, and so on and so forth. 
So this is what I have worked with before. The whiteboard camera is skewed. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can't be bothered to like fix the cameras anymore. Let me use my level. We do have a level here. And let's just see. It's pretty, it's not so bad. Oh, it is skewed. I can, I can, I can turn it a tiny bit. That's gonna make it a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. <coughs> While in the previous example, I was able to get this kind of architecture to work with image input and get results that, that produced something as the output, this can be improved upon. And the reason why this can be improved upon is there is an aspect to this data that's coming in that, uh, that is lost. There is, there is there is information in this data that's coming in that is lost when it is flattened to just a single flat array. And the information that's lost is the relative spatial orientation of the pixels. It's meaningful that these colors are near other colors. Something in what we're seeing in the image has to do with the ar spatial arrangement of the pixels themselves in two dimensions. So there's, um, in order to address that, we want to add into this architecture, <laughs> I really spent a lot of time drawing this diagram, which I'm now going to mostly erase, which is also a hidden layer. Anything in between the inputs and outputs is a hidden layer, but we want to add something called a convolutional layer. So in this video, I want to explain what are the elements there are units, nodes, neurons, so to speak, in a convolutional layer, but what are they? And one, the word that's typically used is actually called a filter, which makes a lot of sense. Now, convolutional neural networks can be applied to lots of scenarios besides images, and there's a lot of research into different ways that they can be used effectively, but I'm gonna stick with the context of working with images, because the word filter really fits with that. We're filtering an image. How is this layer filtering an image? <clears throat> There's another step here called, um, no, let's, let me, I'll come back to it. All right. Now, let me. Pretty sure that someone should fact check for this for me, but this is um, <coughs> now the idea of a convolutional layer is not a new concept. Uh, it dates back to the, the, it predates this deep learning boom, so to speak. Boom, is that really? <laughs> so the idea of a convolutional layer is not a new concept, and it predates uh, the era that we're in now of so-called deep learning. And in fact, if you wanna like go back and find, the, and if you wanna go back and find uh, the, And if you want to go back and look at the origins of convolutional neural networks, you can find them in this paper called Gradient-Based Learning Applied to Document Recognition from 1998. Section two, convolutional neural networks for isolated character recognition, convolutional networks, and here, <coughs> 
we can see this diagram, which is I'm attempting to kind of talk through and create my own version of uh, over here on the whiteboard itself. I think someone's at the door. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Looking for something? No, um, we're walking around with some of the environmental health and safety ah, departments okay. trying to figure out what's in this space. Um, is this an office? This is a recording studio that's actually live, live broadcasting. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I probably should have muted my microphone before I answered the door. Um, this is also the original paper associated with the MNIST uh, data set. Uh, a data set of handwritten digits that's been used an umpteen amounts of times in research papers over the years related to machine learning. Um, this is another, yeah. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about next, which I'm going to uh, come back to. Okay. Should stop this bar. All right. Let's go back, let's, I know I'm going back and forth a lot here, but let's go back to thinking of the input as a two-dimensional image itself. So this two-dimensional image, uh, and let's not say it's 10 by 10, let's use what um, the MNIST data set is, which is a 28 by 28 pixel image, and of course now much higher resolution images are used. And this is what is coming in to the first convolutional layer. This image is being sent to every single one of these filters. The filter is a um, the filter is a matrix of numbers, and it can be um, it, it can the matrix is the fil a filter is a matrix of numbers. And I, let's just for example, let's have a three by three matrix. So each one of these filters represents. Um, <laughs> each one of these filters represents nine numbers, a matrix that's three by three. You could have a five by five filter or, and so on and so forth, but a, a sort of standard size or a nice example size for us to start with is three by three. Each one of these filters is then applied to the image um, Each one of these filters is then applied to the image through a convolutional process. This, by the way, is not, this, by the way, is not a concept exclusive to machine learning. This idea of a convolutional filter to an image has been part of image processing and computer science and computer vision algorithms for a very long time. To demonstrate this, let me actually open up, I can't believe I'm going to do this, but I'm going to open up Photoshop. <coughs> Sign in. Oh, I have a Creative Cloud account. Hold on a second. I didn't think I'd have to sign in. <clears throat> Too legit. You're going to watch Apex Legends videos now when I'm here talking about convolutional neural networks? Um. Okay. Um. Adobe. Oh, no, that's the wrong. Urgh. 
Oh, I have to like log in. Oh, uh, wait. I wonder if I log in. It's through my NYU account. Just give me a second here. Let me try to log in. <laughs> I just want to show you this. This is such a fail. I do have an Adobe Creative Cloud account. I'm very uh, lucky to have that through New York University. That wants me to start it. I logged into my NYU account. <laughs> Let's just do that. And we'll cancel it. figure out how to log in properly later. So what I want to do is let's get an image <coughs> of uh, this is how I it's way too vain to uh, all right whatever let's uh, let's get an image of a kitten. More settings. Uh, where's that thing to usage rights? Um, labeled for reuse with modification. Actually, I should get the quick draw. I should. Mm. Maybe I should. Oh, fine. Let's use the kitten. Can't, what, you can't go wrong with a kitten. Didn't I just download this kitten? Uh, let's do this. Doesn't hurt to have the higher resolution one for Photoshop. Save image. Oh my god. <laughs> I never it's never been so difficult to open a kitten image. I don't need to, uh, I mean, I do need to learn Photoshop. All right. Now in Photoshop, you might notice there's a filter menu. Why? Because all of many, <laughs> now in Photoshop, uh, so here I am in Photoshop and I've opened this image of a kitten and there's a menu option called filter. This word is not filter by accident. It's not called filter by accident over here either. There's a connection. So all of these types of operations that you might do, for example, like blur an image, these are filters, convolutions applied to the image. I'm going to go down here under Other and select Custom. All of a sudden, you're going to see here, I have this matrix of numbers. This matrix of numbers in Photoshop is exactly the same thing as this matrix of numbers I'm drawing right here. Each one of these filters in the convolutional layer represents a matrix of numbers that will be applied to the image. So let me actually just put some numbers in here.
tell me how easy that is to see. Okay, and if I, I mean, this should, if I do this, does it actually make it? Yeah, that's what I want to do. <coughs> I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> This particular set of numbers happens to be a filter for finding edges in an image. And you can think of it as these are all weights for a given pixel. So for any given pixel, I want to subtract colors that are to the left of it and emphasize colors that are at that pixel and above and below. This draws out areas of the image where the neighboring pixels are very, very different. Interestingly enough, I could switch these to zero. And these to negative five. I, I, can you see the difference? Let me do a top. Let me do actually. I think it would actually be better for me to show you like um, like do one above. Whoa. Switching the convolution to have the negative numbers on the top, the, sorry, switching the filter to have the negative numbers on the top, you can see now I'm still detecting edges, but I'm detecting horizontal edges. If you go back and look at the cat that I had previously versus this one, you can see vertical edges versus horizontal edges. So there are known filters which draw out certain features of an image. And that's exactly what each one of these filters does. If all of the nodes of a neural network can draw out and highlight different aspects of an image, those can be weighted to indicate and classify the image in certain ways. The big difference here, the big difference between a convolutional layer in a neural network and what I'm doing here by hard coding in sort of known filters is a neural network is going, is that the neural network is not going to have filters hard coded into them. It's going to learn filters that do a good job of identifying features in an image. So, this relates to the idea of weights, I think. So, if I, if I go back to my previous diagram, where every single input is connected to each hidden node, where every single input is connected to each hidden neuron with a weight. Now, the input image is connected to every single one of these filters, and the, the weights are, are the, in a way, there are now nine weights for every single one. Instead of learning weight, it's going to learn a set of weights for an area of pixels to identify a feature in the image. All of those, all of these filters will start with random numbers. All of these filters will start with random values and then the same gradient descent process, the error back propagating through the network, adjusting all the dials, adjusting all the weights in these matrices in all of these filters, works in exactly the same way. I don't know about exactly. <laughs> works in the same way. So 
So in the ML5 series, I haven't really gone through and looked at the gradient descent learning algorithm to adjust all the weights in detail. I do have another set of videos that do that if you're interested, but the same gradient descent algorithm that is applied to these weights is applied to all of the different values in each of one of these filters. Um, okay. Um, anybody watching this want to want to uh, uh, <laughs> show Gaussian blur filter? Yeah. Let me actually. That's actually kind of a useful one to do. I'm not going to show a Gaussian blur. Um, one 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 one. Oh, it doesn't. Do I do this? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is like dividing by. So. How do I, oh yeah. Oh yeah, no, I see it down there. Incidentally, just to show a very common convolution album to, to album. Incidentally, just to show a very common convolution operation to blur an image, blurring an image is taking the average of a given pixel and all of its neighbors. So here you can see if I give the same weight to a five by five matrix of pixels around a center pixel and then divide that scale is divide by 25 because there's 25, that's averaging all the colors. If I click on preview, blurred, not blurred, blurred, not blurred. Of course, there are other more sophisticated convolutions like a Gaussian blur. You can take a look, a Gaussian blur, <laughs> different ways to pronounce it. You can take a look and research what that is. But again, I'm not going down the road to look at common image processing convolutions. Instead, talking about the concept of a convolution as applied to an image in the process of a convolutional neural network. Middle one should be two. Mm, it doesn't need to be. George, uh, it could be if I wanted it to have a higher weight, but it doesn't need, I mean, there's no right or wrong answers to this, as far as I'm concerned. It's kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Um, all right, so here's the thing. I want to take a small digression here and program the convolution algorithm sort of outside of a neural network. You can't tell the difference? I can tell the difference there. Maybe, uh, maybe you need to like look at it at super high, much higher resolution. Um, was that not an effective demonstration? Or well, let me see. I wish it would like up. It's always previewing it here. Let me zoom in on it a little bit more. Yeah, just to. Show that zoomed in a little more. I mean, Mathieu can do his own zooming when we edit it, but if this is helpful to record this. <coughs> okay, <laughs> if you're watching it on your phone, I can't help you, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it is a subtle blur. All right. Let me go out of here. And let me get, um, let me get something here. Where's this example? Okay. So, I don't like how these are. Um, let's do the second one. Uh, save and then save cat. Oh no, stop, stop. <laughs> I put it in draw. Sorry about that. Just want one cat image. One. So let me um, go back to here. 
uh, duplicate this. Um, convolution. I don't know why I started with this example, but. Oh, no P image. <laughs> actually don't need the ML5 library for this. I'm, I'm like a little bit, it's a little bit silly what I, why I duplicated this, but I do need this particular cat image. No, goes here, no, no. We could do it with the kitten, let's, but let's do it with this. Okay. I'm going. I'm just setting up the uh, base code. I'm going to start with uh, cat equals load image cat dot png, and now let's uh, draw. Where are we? 10, 50. All right, so ten, I'm going to do this convolution example and then take a short break. I'm out of my uh, coffee. So Arnav is asking why 280 times 2? Because the example I'm going to make is going to show the image and then the convolution applied to it. Just to take this, oh, <laughs> just to take this a little bit further, is there something going on with my hair? I see like a weird like line. I don't see it over here though. So in my anyway, <laughs> <coughs> just to take this a little bit further, I'm going to demonstrate how to code the convolution algorithm in P5JS. In truth, ML5 and TensorFlow.js are going to handle all of the convolution operations for us and creating all the filters. We're just going to configure a convolutional layer from a high level. But I think it's interesting to look at how you might code an image processing algorithm in P5. I have some videos that do things like this previously, uh, but let's look at it in this context. So I took a, a low resolution 28 by 28 image of a cat. This comes from the quick draw a data set, which I've made videos about before, and I will also use to see if we can create a doodle classifier as part of this series. Um, and all I want to do is apply a convolution to that image. So first, I'm going to create a variable, and I'm going to call it filter. So this is going to be our filter, and I'm going to make it a two-dimensional array. So let me just put all zeros in it to start. So this is the filter, and let's go with that one that looks for edges. Let me make a separate image that is the same resolution as the cat image, but, oh, you know what's interesting here? I just realized something weird is going on. I'm not actually blowing up the 28 by 28 image. I actually created a 280 by 280 image with like big blocks in it. 
it's a little bit weird. Let me, let me fix that. I think if I do adjust, I think it's going to be more, uh, I don't, let me just change this to 28 by 28. Hit save. And that's really the drawing of the cat. Then let me delete this one. Add file. Re-upload it. So now if I do this again, we're going to see just a little cat up there, which is what I want. But I want to draw it at uh, 280, 280. Whoops. All right. Oh, that's a little blurry. Hmm. Well, now I have to start this whole thing over. Why did it? Oh, because it's trying to uh, smooth it. There we go. <laughs> okay. This, this looks... The, the code is going to kind of like change a teeny bit in the middle of this video, but that's fine. The cat image itself is just 28 by 28 pixels. I'm using a very low resolution uh, version of that drawing, but I'm, I'm, drawing it, uh, I'm drawing it 10 times the size. The cat image is actually quite low resolution, just 20 by 28 pixels, but I'm drawing it at twice the size. I want to write the code to apply this filter to the image and draw the filtered image to the right. I'm going to create a variable called dim for dimensions and just call this 28. And then I th I th I'm all out of order here. But th and then I want another variable to store the filtered image. And in setup, I can create that image. So this creates a blank image at the same, uh, this creates a blank image of the same dimensions as the original cat drawing. Then I can write a loop. And this loop is going to look at every single pixel from for all the columns x and all of the rows y. And I wrote int there because I'm half the time programming in Java. But one thing that's important here, if we're going to take this 3 by 3 matrix and apply it to every single pixel of the original image, if we're applying it to that first pixel, 0, 0, there's no pixel to the left and no pixel above it. It doesn't have all of its neighbors. So there, there's various ways around this, but I'm just going to start with, uh, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just, I'm just going to ignore all the edge pixels. So this loop will go from so the loop will go from 1 to dimensions minus 1. I stopped using this auto format. Okay. Now there's a lot more work to be done here just to apply this filter to any given pixel. I'm trying to think of.
I think a way that might make sense to do this is to actually have a new function. I, I would call the function filter, let's just call it convolution. I'm going to write a function called convolution. It receives an image, an x and a y, and a filter. And it returns a RG, um, it returns a new color. So the idea of this function is it receives, ooh, why did that shut off? I'm turning that fan on. is that it receives all the things it needs. It receives the original image, the filter to apply to it, which particular pixel we want to process, and then we'll return back the new RGB value after that, uh, after that pixel is processed. And the reason why I'm doing that in a separate function is I need another nested loop to go over the filter. So I need to go from Uh, I need to go to e I need to go from zero to three. Zero, one, two, uh, columns in the filter. Zero, one, two, rows in the filter. And it would be getting to be quite a lot if I had four nested loops right in here. Now I probably shouldn't have some of this hard coded in here, the number three and that sort of thing. But um, you can imagine how you might need to use variables if the filter size is flexible. Auto formatting of the editor is driving me crazy. Okay. This should be this. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave, I'll fix that later. This is wrong. <coughs> there are 500 people watching? No. <coughs> now, <laughs> now we have a really sort of like sad fact, <laughs> which is true about most cases where you're doing image processing um, with some framework. And in this case, our framework is JavaScript and Canvas and P5.js. And the sad fact is, though, even though all of this is built, up, all of this discussion is built upon the fact that we are retaining the spatial orientation of the pixels, we're thinking of it as a two-dimensional matrix of numbers, the actual data is stored in one array. And so I've gone over this in probably countless videos, but there's a simple formula to look at if I have a given x, y position in a two-dimensional uh, in a two-dimensional array, in a two-dimensional matrix. How do I find the one-dimensional lookup um, into that matrix, assuming that the pixels are counted uh, by rows? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, blah, blah, blah. Next row, you know, 28, 29, 20, th blah, 30, blah, 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 blah. And that formula is let index, oh, well, I need to do that before this nested loop because I'm looking at the, right now I just want the center pixel, that x, y. Let index equal x plus y times image dot width. But there's more. Oh, so this is the formula. You can think about it. It makes sense, right? Because it's all the x's and then the offset along the y's is how many rows times the width of the image. But there's another problem, which is that in JavaScript, in Canvas, for every single pixel in this image, there are actually four numbers being stored, an R, a G, a B, and an alpha. The red, green, and blue channels and the alpha channel. Channel, singular. So each pixel takes up four spots. So this index actually needs to say times four. So guess what? You know it's going to make a lot of sense. I'm going to need this operation a lot. Let's write a function for it. Index. I'll just call it index. And it receives an x, y, 
and a uh, width, and it returns, you know what, the width is never going to change in my <laughs> sketch. So I, I don't want to be so crazy as to have to pass it around everywhere. So let's ju we're just going to pull it from a global variable. Um, return x plus y times image.width. And that's not image, it's cat.width. Okay? So once again, this is terrible what I'm doing, but I'm just saving myself a little bit of heartache here and there. So this index, ooh, mm, let's call this this pixel is, oh, and this should be times four. This pixel is that function index x, y. Ah, I keep auto formatting and it does this thing. That's fine, I'll leave that there. It's, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Somebody must have shared this live stream because the viewership did just jump up really high and I wonder why. Um, <clears throat> Now, I have something I could do to simplify this, but I might as well write the code for if this were a full RGB image. This is a grayscale image, but it has all the channels in it. So what I need to do to perform this convolution operation, if you go back and think about the Photoshop example that I showed, is I need to add up all of the pixel values of... The thing that I need to do to perform this convolution operation is to take all of the weights the numbers that are in the filter matrix, and I need to multiply each one times the pixel value of all of the neighbors in their corresponding locations, add them all up together, and maybe divide by something if, I'm, if I want to sort of like average it out. But in, in this case, I actually don't want to divide by anything. I'm just going to leave the weights or the weights or the weights or the weights. And actually, this right here is irrelevant. I, don't not, I need to do this inside the loop. You'll see in a second. I think it's going to make sense. So I need sum. I'm going to make a sum of all the R values, a sum of all the green values, and a sum of all the blue values. Then I need to get the R. So now I need to get the pixel, which is, ah, this is not 0 to 3. Oh, yes, it is, because I'm looking up in the filter. Oh, ugh. All right, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Let's actually, I think this is going to make more sense. Let's go from negative 1 to 2. You'll see why. I mean, I'll explain why. And negative 1 to 2. Let's do that instead. And, and maybe it's more clear to say less than or equal to 1. Less than or equal to 1. Because, and let me draw this diagram once again. If this is pixel 0, 0, this is pixel negative 1, negative 1. This is 1, comma 1. This is 1, comma 0. This is uh, <laughs> 1, comma negative 1. I guess I'll do them all. Right. So you can see that the neighboring pixels are offset by negative 1 and 1 and negative 1 and 1. So the pixel x value is x plus i. The pixel y value is y plus j. And then the pixel index is called the index function ah, x, which returns the actual index into that array for pixel x and pixel y. And, and actually, maybe it makes more sense for me to just say that I don't necessarily need separate variables. It might actually be just as clear just to put this right in here. OK. Uh, am I missing chat messages? No. OK. So Amr is asking, can't you load grace the images as grayscale for simplicity? I could. I absolutely could. but. I'm going to just go with this, because then I could also demonstrate this with an RGB image. It'll, it'll, it'll extrapolate uh, better. But yes, I absolutely could. So 
So now I just need to add the red, green, and blue values of this particular pixel to the sum. So sum r plus equal image.pixels at that pixel index. And then g and b. g is the next one. And b, and b, blue, is the next one. And let's add a plus zero here just to be consistent. So ultimately, what I'm actually returning here is r is sum r, g is sum b, and b is sum, <laughs> sum, oh sorry, g is sum g, and b is sum b. So this is the process now of adding up all the pixels. I've gone through every single pixel in a three by three neighboring area and added up all the reds, greens, and blues, and I'm returning those back. Guess what though? <laughs> I'm missing the, ah, why is this camera going off? It's not the coding train if the cameras don't just go off every once in a while or all the time. But I'm missing the crucial component, which is as I'm adding all the pixels up in that area, I need to multiply each one by the value in the filter itself. Incidentally, I should also mention that this, what I'm, the operation that this really is, is the dot product. Um, and in an actual machine learning system, all of this would be done with matrix math. Um, but I'm doing it sort of like longhand, just to sort of see the process and look at it. So, what's, what should I call this in the filter, like the factor? So now I need to look up in the filter I comma I J. Only here's the thing, because I decided to go from negative one to one, negative one to one, the filter doesn't have those index values. It goes zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So this has to be I plus one, J plus one. So it's all six of one, half dozen of the other, whether I go from zero to two there and do the offset in the pixels. But the point is the pixel array, I'm looking actually to the negative and positive to the left and right, but the filter is just a uh, three by three array starting with zero, zero in the top left. So now I should be able to multiply by factor. Can I put this all in one little spot? Yep. And there we go. I have the full convolution operation. Now, I might have made a mistake here. I think this is right. When I run it, we'll find out if I made a mistake. I'm, take, I'm, I'm summing up a three by three neighborhood of pixels, all multiplied by weights that are in a three by three filter. Oh, but I actually have to call that function here now, which should be relatively easy because all the work was in there. So if I say let's, um, I'm just going to call this RGB equal convolution. The cat at a given x and y with the filter. Then the new image, which is called filter. Oh, <laughs> I have to look up. It's okay, no problem. The pixel is index x, y, and then filter, and so I have to look up the one-dimensional location in the new image, and then at uh, dot pixels, at that pixel is the RGB, the red value that came back, plus zero, plus zero, plus one, plus two, green and blue, and then if all goes according to plan, I should be able to draw the filtered image at offset to the right um, 
with the same uh, size. I did miss something kind of important, which is that if I am working with pixels of an image in P5, I need to call load pixels. So cat.load pixels, filter.load pixels. And then I haven't changed the pixels of the original cat image, but since I changed the pixels of the filtered image, afterwards I need to just call update pixels. And now is the moment of truth. This is never, never good when I press the snare drum button and run the sketch. Whoops. All right, well, I've already got an error. <coughs> Cannot read property load pixels of, oh, filter, filter, filtered. That should be filtered. Also, this isn't right. Create canvas. The size of the canvas is times 10 times 2. Uh, times 10. Remember, the image is just 28 by 28. Let's try this again. <laughs> well, a little bit better. Didn't get any errors. I don't see an image. Where did I go wrong? Do I need to give it a hard code a transparency of 255? Yes. <laughs> Oops. So uh, it was fully transparent. So I'm not pulling the transparency over. I could pull it over, but I just know I don't want it to be transparent. Look at that. Look at how it found the feed. Oh, 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 oh. Look at this. That doesn't look like it's finding the vertical edges pixels that are different to the left, it looks like it's finding horizontal edges. And you know, <laughs> Simon's saying, do you know that 10 times 2 is 20? I know, I know. <laughs> Siraj is really asking me to say their name. So I guess I'm just to get that to stop, please don't post things like that. I mean, I appreciate your kind thoughts, but it, it does fill up the chat. But I'll say the name Suraj Kushwa so that we can move on. Okay. Um, thank you for all of your support and for watching the channel. Now, um, the, re the reason why this is detecting horizontal edges and not vertical ones is because of the way that I'm doing my loop. I is first. In the loop, uh, oh no, why is that? I mean, if I'm thinking of why, I yeah, because if I is the x value, oh, it's the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why it's finding the horizontal filters rather than the vertical filters is even though I wrote it out this way, the inner loop down here is looking at, um, right, is, yeah, but shouldn't it match up? I'm like, I'm like, uh, my, my brain is a little fuzzy here. No, I know, I, I know how to fix it. I'm just trying to get the words to explain this. Why is it doing, not doing it? Because x plus i, I mean, if i is changing, because i corresponds to the outer, the outer array. OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So even though I've written it this way, so visually, these negative ones appear as if they're like a vertical column, the inner loop is actually iterating over um, the, 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 um, the smaller arrays inside, the inner loop is actually iterating over the smaller arrays inside the larger array. So I, not the inner loop, no, no, no. <laughs> One more time, with feeling. Even though 
even though I've, I've, I've typed this out in a way that visually these negative ones appear in a column, uh, the, it's actually uh, those correspond not to the J index, but to the I index. So I think uh, one way to fix that would just be to swap it here. And, and maybe I, I, there's like a more elegant way of doing this, but this now, if I run it this way, you'll see, ah, look at those horizontal edges. <coughs> no need to apologize, Siraj. I appreciate your uh, interest. Um, so now we see how this convolution is applied to the image. What's actually happening, just to go back for a moment to this neural network process, is we don't know what filter is going to produce a meaningful output to recognize what's in the image. Oh, this camera must be overheating. I don't know why. I mean, it's not that hot today. It's 77 degrees in this room, but... We don't know what filter is going to produce a meaningful output in order to recognize or highlight something that's in the image. And sometimes we might need multiple filters to highlight different things. Ah! All right. I've got a fan for this in case of emergency. So let me blow this fan. I think the camera is overheating, um, which usually doesn't happen with this amount of like. So hold on, I'm just. I'm gonna just to blow the air around here for a bit. It's a little bit loud, but I don't want it to. You can always process the audio later. Um, <coughs> The difference in the neural network here, the convolutional neural network, is we're not hard coding in specific filters that we know highlight things in an image. The neural network is going to learn what values for the filters highlight important aspects of the image to help the machine learning task at hand, such as classification. So it might draw out, you know, cats tend to have, you know, eat ears that appear in a certain way, and this kind of filter like brings that out and then uh, leads to the final, way, final layer of the network activating with a high value for that particular classification. So just to keep my example simulating the neural network process a bit more, let's just, every time I run it, give it a random filter, because that's what the layer would begin with. Just like a neural network begins with random weights and learns the right weights, the filters begin with random values and it learns optimal values. So right here in setup, sorry, right here, so right here in setup, I'll write a nested loop. Oops. and give it a random value between negative and one. Now, in truth, a uh, convolutional neural network, uh, in truth, there are other mechanisms and strategies for starting the, for the initial weights of a convolutional uh, neural network, but picking random numbers will work for, for us right now just to see. So every time I run it, you can see we get a different uh, resulting image that is filtering the image in a different way. Okay, um, so um, I'm, it's 11.20, I have an hour and 15 minutes left. Um, <laughs> the next thing that I'm going to do is talk about one more operation called uh, max pooling. That's another the operation that happens after this filtering process. Then I will zoom back out and look at the, um, the full uh, architecture of a convolutional neural network and that will finish this first 
tutorial. If I have time, I'll then actually show how to, in ML5, add a convolutional layer to a neural network. Um, so, let, but, but I want to take a short break, and I want to take this time to uh, thank, whoops, uh, the sponsor of today's uh, Coding Train episode. Oh, look, everybody left. <laughs> um, I want to take a short break, and I want to take this time to uh, thank the sponsor of the Coding Train today, uh, which is audible.com. So I happen to be already, I'm so excited about this, because I happen to already be a uh, audiobook listener. Um, I do try to read books as well. I mean, that's a thing. But uh, I do, I spend a lot of time on the subway. I spend a lot of time jogging, exercising. I don't spend as much time as I would like. And I, I find that listening to something, uh, music is a thing to listen to. But for me, listening to audiobooks is a way to, A, a uh, have a chance to, um, to, uh, um, to, to learn something that I don't have the time to read the physical book. Um, and it's just, it, it keeps, it's energizing. I really love it. And I am so excited because I didn't know this. I listen to a lot of different kinds of audiobooks. I listen to, uh, you know, detective novels and strange non and historical nonfiction <laughs> and different kinds of things. But I hadn't really looked into whether there were uh, machine learning audiobooks. And so the, the exciting thing that I'm going to tell you is that if you go to audible.com slash coding train or text coding train to 500, 500, you will get a free, uh, uh audiobook a 30-day free trial of the Audi Audible um, subscription, which every month you get a free audiobook and two Audible originals, which are original content produced by Audible. Um, but there's a book that I want to recommend, which I'm going to see if I bookmarked it before I started, uh, which is called You Look Like a Thing and I Love You, uh, which is How Artificial Intelligence Works and Why It's Making the World a Weirder Place by Janelle Shane. <laughs> I started listening to this yesterday. <laughs> and first of all, what's so wonderful about this book is a lot of the work of Janelle Shane is generating text with AI. And, uh, and, uh, and she's going through in the book how a lot of like, how a lot of times she gets nonsense. And the audiobook narrator, uh, Zhe, uh, Zhe, I don't know how to pronounce X E, Sands, performs all of this like nonsense speak. And it's kind of hysterical and wonderful and delightful. So this book both has uh, a wonderful set, I mean, it's a really great companion to the stuff that I'm teaching about, because it goes through the concepts, but it also looks at it in the context of creative arts and sort of making weird stuff. So I couldn't, I couldn't recommend it enough for you to listen to. Um, let me see here if I'm missing anything else that I want to tell you about Audible. So Audible members can choose three titles every month, uh, one audiobook like this, uh, two exclusive Audible Originals that you can't hear anywhere else. And you also, Marvel members also get access to exclusive guided fitness programs. Oh, <laughs> to start to start the new year off. It's still in, it's not February yet. You can still start the new year off with your New Year's resolution to listen to an audio book, to listen to an audio book once per month. Um, so you can start listening with a 30-day 30 30 Audible trial. Choose one audiobook and two Audible Originals absolutely free at audible.com slash coding train or text coding train to 500, 500. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to take a short break to refill my uh, mug of, I don't know what I'm going to put in it, water, tea, coffee. You may be seeing what I'm going to find out in the kitchen over there. Um, if you have a chance in, uh, to give Audible a try while, if you're still hanging around for the second half of this live stream, uh, you can take your time to do this in this break. And I will be back in just about five minutes to continue this convolutional neural network example.
Hi everybody, um, it's gonna just be three or four minutes more. So I'm just, the song ends in about 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna scrub it back to the beginning. Um, and I'll be back in just about three or four minutes. Um, moving as quickly as I can. Okay, thank you for your patience. <coughs> um, I, have, I am back. Um, so again, thank you to audible.com. Uh, you can get a free trial at audible.com slash coding train. And I really, this book is so wonderful. I actually ordered, I'm listening to the audiobook right now and I also ordered the hard copy, but it hasn't come yet. Otherwise I'd wave it in front of you. Um, okay, close this and we are back here. 
So I'm going to save this as is. And now I'm going to say duplicate convolution max pooling. Okay, oh, and this I can remove. Um, <coughs> Eternal coder says the viewer instant rise happened twice. What if someone is view botting? Eh, that seems kind of unlikely that someone is view botting. I mean, why would anybody do that? I, I mean, it did the fact that it happened twice and it was very consistent with the numbers is a little bit odd. Usually when this happens, it's because just somebody happens to share something on social media or sometimes YouTube is doing like weird stuff with its recommendations and all of a sudden it sends a whole bunch of people who all like come and then instantly leave when they realize it's not what they're looking for. <laughs> so who knows? Hip chocolate chip, hope your midterms went well. And <coughs> Marcello is asking, can I post two links of a project? So I don't know, maybe you're asking about posting links to the YouTube chat. I will mention that, um, what am I saying? Ah, so if you want to share stuff, the two ways to do it are, I mean, there's lots of ways to share stuff. But in terms of coding train community is the Discord. So uh, I will post the Discord link. I have a button that does that now. Uh, so that Discord link should appear in the chat. Um, but it's actually going to appear before I say this. Because <laughs> the chat is in real time, but there's a 30 second lag between what I say and when it reaches your ears. Um, and then also at thecodingtrain.com, there are ways of adding links to projects that relate to particular videos or challenges. Um, OK. <coughs> Everyone wants to know what's in the cup. So this is why I took a little bit longer. I was like, I, I feel like I need some coffee. <laughs> and I went, I was like, no coffee. I was like, I, you know what? I don't need to drink coffee. I just need water. So I filled it up with water. I had a nice, full mug full of water. By the way, I really love this mug so much. I'm waiting for it to be a sponsor of the coding train. <laughs> um, hit me up, fellow mug, I think it's called. I forget what the company is. Anyway. Uh, audible.com slash coding train. Um, <laughs> um, what was I saying? Ah, but then I was like, I need a couple more minutes. I need to make a quick little bit of coffee. So I made a little coffee. So here's some coffee. Hello to Orr and Param and uh, other people in the chat. Um, 232 in the chat is asking, can you give temporary permission? I could, but it's, it's, I can't manage that while I'm live streaming, so I prefer people to share links. I just keep the YouTube protective settings on, and that's the way it is. And welcome to Brian Park. All aboard on the coding train. With your coding train membership, you have received a random number. <coughs> Your random number is... <laughs> 65,076. <clears throat> oh, thanks for uh, watching the um, Promises video, says Orr. Appreciate it. All right, now, what am I doing? So just so you know, I have kind of like a hard stop at, at 12.30. Um, there's, a, there's a workshop happening in this space um, starting at 1, so I need to get out of here and kind of clean up. Um, plus, I need to move on my day and eat lunch and do other things as much as I would like to live stream. My voice is starting to hurt. I might talk for a lot, but um, good thing for you is hopefully maybe even as soon as next week, a video that's not edited out of a live stream will be coming live on the channel, a Coding in the Cabana video. It's very cold during that video. It snowed. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, all right, what am I looking for? Max pooling. OK. Back to this paper. Oh, no, there's this. <coughs> oh, 
Oh, by the way, this is just from Wikipedia, but this is, you can see, um, just a lot of additional, these are a lot of sort of common uh, convolution um, filters for certain kinds of uh, operations. Okay, um, so I, I, this is sort of my notes. I, I hesitate to use a lot of these diagrams and images in the edited version of the video that's coming out. I mean, certainly I would credit them, but they're not ones that I've made, and um, I want to be thoughtful about, um, you know, I want to feature the work of others, but I also want to be thoughtful about um, having permission to use uh, others, others' work. But I think this paper, where did the paper go? Where is the, all right. I just want to see, I like, I kind of like using the, um, the Jan LeCun paper with other authors oh, there are as well. Um, so where's the, ah, here we go. I just want to see if Max Pooling is in here. Sub, oh, it's subsampling. Is subsampling the same as the max pooling operation? Because it doesn't say in this. Oh no, I have, I have to do this every time. <laughs> now, welcome, Linz Kraut, to the coding trade. All aboard the coding trade. Cheers! You have entered the cafe car where I will be drinking my. Coffee, saying hello to you. Um, uh, Kay Weekman writes, I think so. I, I, I'm pretty sure that he's referring to my question. I'm, I'm so happy that Kay Weekman has joined and is watching because uh, <laughs> it's. Um, it really helps me to um, stay sane and know that what I'm saying is not completely crazy. Is this actually, oh, this is, uh, I can search this PDF. Uh, pooling. Pooling does not show up. My guess is it's the subsampling. Um, if anybody knows this for sure, I would appreciate. So, okay, I was indeed, all right. Okay. Now that I've wrapped up talking about the convolutions, uh, there's one other, there's many other aspects of this diagram, but there's one other really important operation that happens in a convolutional neural network that's described in this diagram as subsampling that I want to add to my diagram and my code demonstration. And that is, and I'm not going to call it subsampling. I, um, the, con the common term for this now is called pooling. Um, and in particular, the operation that I want to add is max pooling. So there are different kinds of pooling you could do, but max pooling is the standard pooling operation for a convolutional neural network. So max pooling, I mean, it's another layer. It can happen at any given point. Um, so we could max pool before we apply the convolution. But I, typically speaking, the convolutional filters are applied and then after those are applied, we get new images out of those, and those go through a max pooling layer. So I think to describe, I think I need to erase this whole diagram so that I can look at max pooling, and then we could kind of come back to this uh, when we look at the full architecture. So, 
Let's begin with our 28 by 28 image. Then let's assume I have one filter, just to simplify things. I had one filter that was three by three. And one thing I didn't discuss, and it's gonna be more relevant with the max pooling layer, because I'm gonna do something specific with it, is there's a term you'll see called stride. And stride refers to, remember, this filter, you know, I'm not gonna actually do this 28 by 28, but this filter is applied to each and every pixel. We take, we take this filter, apply it to this pixel, and this gives us a new image. Pixel, apply filter, take the result into a new pixel. Pixel, apply filter, take the result, put it into the new pixel. Here's the thing. This is 28 by 28. This is a three by three filter. I had to start with this pixel right here, right, because the edges don't have neighbors on all sides. So ultimately, this, and, and stride, sorry, stride refers to how far I pass the filter along as I'm going through the image. Um, I don't really have enough spots here, but you know, I could, I could take the filter and jump over pixels as I'm applying it to reduce the resolution of the image. In this case, I had a stride of one. In my code that I wrote, the stride was one. I just slid over by one, and we can actually see where the stride would go. If I go back to my example, um, this ultimately right there, the x plus plus, y plus plus, that's the stride. So I could say x plus equals stride, y plus equals stride, and set the stride equal to 1. So that's what was happening here. But even with a stride of 1, if I'm skipping the edge pixels, my new image is 27 by 27. So one thing that's really key to how a convolutional neural network works is that the image over time, as it goes from layer to layer to layer, so this is the uh, convolutional layer with the filters. And now I'm going to talk about the pooling layer. Um, the, the resolution is reduced. And this has a number of benefits. One is images are high resolution with millions of pixels. So this, the, this learning space of a neural network to learn all of the parameters of every pixel connected to every filter throughout multiple layers, it would just be much too big to realistically be computationally realistic to do. So this process of reducing the image down and down and down as the layers is effective in keeping things manageable. But it also has another benefit, which is we're trying to boil the essence of the image down into something that will highlight key features in that image. And so this is really what, the, what pooling does, what max pooling does. Um, one, one thing it does is it really reduces the resolution, which I'll show you in a second, but it also picks and chooses the pixels that have the highest values to emphasize those, what is really being activated. So uh, pooling comes with a matrix as well. It's not really a filter, but it's a matrix. And uh, a standard uh, matrix might be two by two. And so let's take the case, and actually let me erase all this, just to zero in on pooling. I'm going to try to, let's come up with a simple scenario. What if I did 8 by 8? <sighs> Terrible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, I'm the worst. Right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, so close. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <sighs> to describe this, I'm going to start with an eight by eight image. And I'm going to do max pooling with a two, two by two max pooling with a stride of two. So there are no weights. This is not a filter. It's two by two is just describing how much of the, how many pixels am I looking at at one given time. 
So, if, if I'm looking at a two by two area of pixels for each iteration of this algorithm, and then my stride is two, the next set of pixels I'll look at is here, the next one is here, the next one is here. So for, uh, for, the, for the columns, I end up looking at four, and for the rows, it's the same. It's eight by eight, four. So actually, the result, I just want to point out that after max pooling, and actually, I don't know, I don't need to draw it that far over. The result after max pooling is four by four. Four by four. Now, how does the algorithm work? Well, this sounds like some fancy thing. This is actually the simplest thing ever. Basically, for each one of these areas of two by two pixels, take the largest value, the brightest color, and put it in there. So, um, so I'm going to fill in some arbitrary values here. I don't know how easy this will be to see, but let me just write some values in. So I'm not going to fill this whole thing out, but you see, I don't know how well you can see this, but I have the numbers 4, 8, negative 1, 2. The highest one is 8. It goes here. I have the numbers 3, 3, 1, 9. The highest one is 9. The highest one is 1. The highest one is 10. And so the max pooling algorithm takes these little neighborhoods, 2 by 2 max pooling, skips, goes from one to the other with a stride of 2. I could have just move these neighborhoods just by one or by even a larger amount, um, but this is pretty typical, and then takes it down. This has, the, this, has the, the <coughs> this has the benefit of subsampling the image, reducing it, but not just, we could do average pooling, so you could do average pooling, average all of these, but it turns out convolutional neural networks perform better with max pooling over average pooling. Maybe not in all cases, but in sort of like the standard image classification case. And this is because what we're looking for are features in the image that we want to highlight. And so by uh, looking at an area of pixels and seeing which pixel sort of activated the most and keeping that one, that's going to really emphasize and help boil the essence of the image down into something lower resolution. Oh, does no one use max pooling anymore? <laughs> Is, am I so like out of date? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> me, I am so me. I will, I will do. Uh, it really likes my member joining bit, which I very much appreciate. This is a sort of spontaneous thing I thought of today. I will happily, uh, when if I have some time. Uh, so just to be accurate in my. Um, video here, should I s add a little sentence about what is now more commonly used than max pooling? Truth teller says me, tells me, and, and truth teller, his name is truth teller. So truth teller, I know because when I see something on the internet, I definitely read it without being critical or thinking about whether it could be accurate at all, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I, you know, I have no reason to doubt truth teller. K Weekman's confirmation could really help me though. <laughs> I don't want to put too much pressure on K Weekman. Max pool plus average pool is better. Dilated pool. Coding train breaking news. Is dilated pooling the same thing? Dilated pooling. Max pooling, dilated pooling, all right. Max pool is most common, all right. <coughs> I should add, just to be really accurate here, and the chat is, uh, tell, is, is offering some different opinions about this, that while max pooling is the most sort of like common historical example uh, of, while max pooling is the most common historical example of pooling in a convolutional neural network, 
There are other, other research is showing promising results from things like dilated pooling, which is a new concept to me that I just looked up and read about. Some combination, you can also do a combination of max pooling and average pooling. So there is, I think, some discussion and research happening there. And I'm not here to tell you what is the optimal way to architect your convolutional neural network. I just want to talk about and explain the process and look at an example of it, which is very common, like max pooling. Um, in particular, uh, um, well, uh, okay, so I think that's enough. That's enough for me to say and add. So, now, so let's add max pooling. Okay. Trying to think of how to do this. <coughs> would I max pool the R, G's, and B's separately? I think I would, right? Or would I take the pixel value that is the. Um, would I take the pixel value from whatever the, from the one that has the highest like brightness, like the average RGB? Like, could I take different R's and G's and B's from different pixels in the neighborhood, or do I have to take the full RGB from one that happens to have the highest brightness? I don't know. Can someone answer that for me before I move on? And I have about a half an hour left. This might be the last thing that I do today. I'll wait. This is a terrible thing for me to do. Just like have a question and not bother trying to research it or think about it. Just like ask it, wait for the chat to tell me. It's <laughs> worked for me in the past. Um, and I guess I'll start writing this code because I don't have to answer this right now. Maybe take RGB separately. So maybe I'll just ask this question as I make the video, and I'll just pick one way of doing it, since there doesn't seem to be a consensus in the last few seconds. So I'm going to write another function, much like convolution, but call it pooling. And the same thing that goes here, I want to receive an image. I want to find a certain x, y. I want to, same thing happens here. I want to receive an image. I want to give an x, y. I want to return some RGB value that is the highest RGB values within that neighborhood. Um, now, there's an interesting question here. Do I take the RGB values from the brightest pixel, whatever they might be, or do I just take the, the highest R, the highest G, and the highest B independently, and they could be from different pixels? I don't, I don't know the answer to that right now. Let me take the RGB from the brightest pixel. Um, No, that's going to be more work. Let me just go with actually picking the brightest R, the brightest G, and the brightest B separately, independently.
So I'm going to start with the brightest R, G, and B. And I, I could start with zero, but just to be really, really safe, you absolutely, absolutely, absolutely in the convolutional process, there's the, the, the idea of pixels is gone. We're really just dealing with numeric data. Um, so I really should, if I'm going to try to find the brightest, a start with in negative infinity, because that's the lowest possible number, you know, in JavaScript, that is. Then I want to look at this two by two area. And the same thing that I did before in convolution, I, oh, let me go. And the same thing that I did before in the convolution, I want to look at the given pixel and its neighbors. Yeah, starting with the color image definitely made life difficult for myself. It is silly because the image itself is grayscale, but whatever. At the end, I'll load my color image to see that this actually works with color. Um, <clears throat> and then I could get the R, G, and B from that pixel. And now I just want the maximum. I want if this R is greater than that pre the what is being stored as the brightest R, then that R should be the brightest R, which I can do with the max operation. Bright R is the biggest between bright R and R. And the same for G and B. Oh. And the same for G and B. Oh. <laughs> and that has to be one and two. So this is actually all that I need to do. This is max pooling right here, but now I just need to return bright R, bright G, and bright B. Next, I'm going to create yet another image. I'm going to call it pooled. And pooled is also a blank image. However, if you recall, I'm going to use a stride of two. So the resolution of that image is reduced further by half. So I'm actually going to take out the stride from here. And I'm going to create a global variable for stride. But this stride is only referring to the pooling process. Because then I can say create image dim divided by stride, dimensions divided by stride. Sorry, I'm lost here. So 
So just to add some comments for a moment, this is convolutional layer. I mean, I'm simulating the idea of a convolutional layer. I'm not actually, there's no neural network here. There's no machine learning here. I'm just going through these particular algorithms without matrix operations, I should add. Then, let's add the pooling operation. So same thing here. I'm going to go through all of the pixels. Ah. <clears throat> In this case, I can start at zero but I still need to only go to dimensions minus one because basically I'm going to skip every two pixels and I don't want to end up here. So this is plus equal stride and this is plus equal stride. I can do the same exact thing. I can create a variable called RGB, which equals now pooling. I want to pool, what were my arguments? The image and the XY. Why is there, oh. And I should probably call this like max pooling, but whatever. Cat, oh, no, no, I'm not pooling the cat. The cat was filtered with convolution, and then the filtered image is pooled. So I'm pooling filtered at this given x, y. Then I need to figure out where am I putting the resulting RGB values. I'm putting them in the, <laughs> I'm putting them in the image called pooled, but that image has the dimensions of half. So the pooled x is x divided by the stride. The pooled y is y divided by the stride. And then the index is, and <clears throat> yeah, so this is why this function really needs the image uh, passed with it. I, I should not have used the global variable. That was a terrible idea because I want to reuse it, but I have a different resolution of image. So I'm going to go back to making this image. And then uh, where did I call it? Here it's, uh, image.width, here it's cat, oh, I don't need to do the dot, dot width, it's just the, the particular image that I'm calling the operation with. I need it here, image, anywhere else? Oh, here, image. So now I can say index of pixel x, pixel y in the pooled image because I want to say pooled dot pixels pix plus zero equals rgb dot r. And I need to add the load pixels and update pixels. And now this should be the max pooling operation. Go over the filtered image by the stride for every two by two area find the highest RGB values, and then add those to the pixel, the corresponding pixel in the lower resolution pooled image. Let me make the height of my canvas times two so I can put the pooled image at the bottom right. 
So the filtered image went off to the right, and now the pooled image should go also off to the right. And let's give this a try. I don't see the pooled image. Line six, the chat is telling me line 61 is an error. This should be a G. What did I miss? Oh! I forgot to add the alpha in again. I always forget this. So I need to give it the alpha. There we go. So let's go back to a known filter instead of having random filters. So that was my edge detection. And you can see this is just, I mean, visually what I'm seeing right now is kind of like a lower resolution version of what you have above. But if I were to rewrite this with, say, average pooling, I think you would see it different. It wouldn't come at the, those features, these edge features that it's, you know, in a neural network would be discovering. Here I'm telling it to look for those are highlighted even more than they would be with just average pooling itself. All right. So now that I've shown you the code for both applying a convolution filter to an image and then a pooling algorithm to that image with a variable stride, I think that I can now go back and look at the larger, the larger diagram of the full story of a convolutional neural network that has these components in it. And again, our reference point is this diagram from the 1998 paper, which is called the 1998 paper, Gradient-Based Learning Applied to Document Recognition. But Mathieu, when we edit this, we can just leave this there. <laughs> I just needed to read what the paper was called. Um, uh, and then, so what, where was I? Okay. Um, Want to also I also just want to highlight for you a blog post that was super helpful for me in like figuring out what to do and talk about in or okay. I also want to highlight for you a blog post that was really helpful for me when I was reading up and researching and trying to learn about convolutional neural networks. Um, it's this blog post right here, An Intuitive Explanation of Convolutional Neural Networks from, from 2016. Um, this diagram is super helpful. This is exactly what I want to talk through, basically. And there are a lot of nice visual diagrams and animations of the convolution process, uh, convolutional filters, as well as um, the max pooling algorithm itself as well. Okay. 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 Um, <laughs> forget that that eraser doesn't work very well.
Let's look at the, here's my best attempt now at the full story of the convolutional neural network. We start with an image. The first layer is a convolutional layer. And I'm writing 2D because a lot of times in a machine learning library, you can have convolutions in different dimensions. And we're working with a two-dimensional convolution here. The convolutional layer has a number of filters. The image is sent to every one of those filters, and the, the filters are applied. I should say that the pixel, the values that come out of the filters aren't just the raw values from the convolution process. They're also then passed through an activation function, the same kind of activation function that is in a standard neural network, or standard dense layer. The, um, let's just say standard. The same kind of the same kind of activation function that's in a standard layer or a dense layer. So typically, um, this would be rectified linear unit or RELU. <laughs> <laughs> typically, this would be rectified linear unit, R-E-L-U. Then, The next step is max pooling. I'll represent that with little squares. So the image that comes out of the convolution and the activation function is then max pooled. And then the output there is another image. So we take this first image, pass it through a bunch of filters, max pool them, and then we have a whole bunch of new images that are most likely, if I'm using the, a stride of, the, and a whole bunch of other images that, if I'm using a stride of two, now have half the resolution as the original image. So the question becomes, what to do next? Well, we could be done and pass this to what, I'm, what is the last layer. And if we're doing that, at some point, the data does have to be flattened. So everything I did in my previous video about ML5 neural network with an image that just go, gets flattened and passed in, that is what happens in the last layer. The last dense layer takes these images and makes and has um, a, hidden, a hidden layer of neurons, and each image is flattened and sent into all of those and then um, sent to the output layer. Yeah, and then sent to the output layer and passed through the softmax activation function that I've described, which gives it a probability for a classification, if this were a classification problem. But what's interesting is, in most cases, if you look at a lot of these diagrams, for example, this diagram on the blog post I referred to, or, This particular diagram here, you'll see convolutions subsampling. Convolutions subsampling. So it's actually quite common in a convolutional neural network. Oh, I really didn't give myself enough space here. Ugh. have another convolutional layer, like let's say there's just three convolution filters, this image goes into all of them. I'm confused. Somebody help me out here for a second. So let's say we have another set of filters. This many filters. This, these images that come out, I mean, there's one image that goes into all these initi initial filters then that gets max pooled and, and we get a new set of images. 
each one of these images would go into all of the filters. But does that mean, does that mean then I'm actually producing, uh, I now have uh, one, two, three, four, five times four, 20 images that get max pulled? That must be, right? Yeah, we can see that happening here because there's this many uh, images that get subsampled and then the convolutions are, uh, excellent name is saying they're stacked into a 3D image, but ultimately that's the same idea. Filters must be 3D. But here, this diagram, it's showing it expand out, right? Yup, says Isaac. <laughs> Let me redraw this to give myself a little bit of room. I'm, I'm running out of room and I want to diagram the full story. I used so much space here for this image. Okay, so here's the same diagram, but squashed a little bit to the left here, because what I want to do now is add another convolutional layer and another max pooling layer. So here's the same diagram, but squashed a little bit to the left, because I want to add another convolutional layer and another max pooling layer. So I'm going to add some more filters here. But something interesting is going to happen here. So let me actually do fewer filters in this next layer. And I'm going to be really, I'm going to just only use two. I'm going to get really, and there's only two filters here. Well, these images that result from the first convolutional max pooling process, they need to be tested, or not tested, they need to be sent to both filters. So this image goes here, this image goes here. So in essence, we have one, two, three, four times two um, times two filters, and I, I'm not really drawing this well to have eight in total. So we get eight new outputs out of this convolutional layer, and each one of those needs to be max pooled. So now, I have eight images. And remember, let's say this was 28 by 28. These are all seven by, oh, sorry, 14 by 14. Then after this convolution process and this max pooling, these are all now seven by seven. So we get these progressively lower and lower resolution uh, feature maps of the original image with lots of different filters applied in lots of different ways. Finally, 
And this is exactly. And then the final result is essentially everything that I did in my non-convolutional neural network with an image, just that one hidden layer, it's called a fully connected or dense layer, and one output layer. All of that gets put right here, but instead of some original image being flattened and sent to it, this whole process has happened, and we're sending the data from these seven by seven images through the one dense layer and one, and I've totally run out of room here, so I'm just gonna put O here, output layer. And this is where we would finally see, is it a cat or is it a dog? We would see probability values for the particular classification task. And again, if I come back to this diagram, I just want to thank uh, the author of this blog post because this is a much nicer, more sort of like elegant way of uh, drawing this. <laughs> and you can see actually this has two fully connected layers, which is also a thing. So there are different ways you could architect this. I only drew seven, so let me say. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. I'm missing one here. Okay. Even though this is a bit of a mess, uh, let me go back and refer to the, uh, and thank the author of this blog post for this much uh, mo more uh, thoughtful and um, precise diagram showing these different layers, how the images uh, become lower and lower resolution, uh, become these final feature maps, and then get passed through what's here is actually two fully connected layers. So there are a lot of reasons why you might have different numbers of convolutional layers, different numbers of fully connected layers, different strides, different filter sizes. Uh, by the way, another word for filter is kernel. So this is, this, I, I really, all I want to do in this video was talk through all of the pieces as well as show you some code that actually runs through and does those processes to an image itself, which I think opens up a lot of interesting possibilities for you if you wanted to create a project around visualizing the process of a convolutional neural network as it's learning. Now this would be a much bigger endeavor than what I've done here because you need to create these visuals out of all of the pieces as the training process is happening. But ultimately, what I want to do next is two slash three things. And it might take a while for me to get to them, but they will be eventually, hopefully, in subsequent videos. One is I want to just create this exact architecture with ML5. So I want to show you how in ML5 I can make ML5 neural network with a convolutional layer, maybe two convolutional layers, and then a dense layer and an output layer. Then I can take that and apply it to the previous example where I didn't use convolutional layers and just see how that looks. I also would like to look at creating something called that I'll call a uh, I would also like to look at something uh, that we could call a doodle classifier. So using the quick draw data set that I've referred to in a number of different videos, could I train an, a classifier to recognize particular drawings? And in fact, ML5 has built into it a, a, a pre-trained doodle classification model um, that's uh, pretty robust. So you know, I might try to train a sort of like smaller version of that, write all the code for that with ML5, but ultimately then show you how to use the pre-trained model that's in ML5 as well. But that uses convolutional layers. OK, so thank you so much. If you somehow made it all the way to the end of this rather long explanation and kind of tinkering around with code demonstration of what the process of convolution and pooling is in a convolutional neural network. I hope to see you in a future coding train video. I mean, I don't really see you, but I, I feel your presence somehow. And sometimes you write a nice comment that brings me a little happiness to my day. So I will see you in that virtual way in a future video. And thanks for watching. And have a great day that's not convoluted at all. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, Gene Kogan's What Neural Network C. Ah, let me reference that. I meant to. Thank you. Yeah, this is what I meant to reference. Yeah, this is. What is that?
Maybe we could fly in a little uh, clip of this. What I'm describing actually is really, um, what I'm describing really has been implemented with Gene Kogan's uh, uh, video and, and lecture series called What Convolutional Neural Networks See. And you can see over here a visualization of all the filters being applied to genes, a webcam image in real time. So I've maybe given you the pieces now of what it would take to actually create a project like that yourself. Uh, okay. Truth teller is, get, is spouting some total truth online. To be fair, that's a better cat than the cats in the Cats movie. All right. Um, hmm, Simon Tiger points out for 32 by 32 images, you can bring it down to a one by one pixel image in only five convolutional layer blocks, which is a term. Okay, it's a peek into the black box. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, okay, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I've got to go. I uh, didn't get, so listen up, listen. If I go now to, let's just go to here. This, I had a little guide here of what, I think it's like under missing videos. Let's see, uh, sort by recently updated missing visitors. So, oh, oh my God, so many things to do. Um, eh. <laughs> Let's revise this. Oh boy. Uh, edit. What are CNNs? That was done. Well, I was hoping to check off, whoops, I was, I was hoping to check off more boxes, <laughs> but clearly I, d <laughs> I added more boxes and checked off one, so I've actually gone back in time, I actually have more to do than what I had to do before I started today. And here's the thing, I, I'm unfortunately going to leave this stuff aside. Um, I would like to, over the course of this semester, fill in gaps here. But next week, if I, when I'm back next week for a live stream, which will hopefully be next Friday, although I am planning to switch to Thursdays, but I think next week it's actually going to be Fridays, um, I am going to um, start looking at, it's going to be a fairly beginner, hopefully fairly beginner friendly uh, session on create vector and vectors in P5JS. So all this stuff, at least I have this list to keep track of stuff. Um, but, and I will try to return to it, hopefully I would, over the course of this semester. We'll see how that goes. Whew. Um, thank you for tuning in. Let me put on this little song. Um, I'll remind you that you can sign up for um, the Discord. Um, and I have just posted the Discord link in the chat. I'll also once again remind you to thank, uh, I mean I'm thanking and remind you that you can get a free 30-day uh, trial of Audible uh, Premium. Uh, Audible subscription at audible.com slash coding train. Um, and that gives you a free audiobook and two Audible originals. I highly recommend Janelle um, Shane's uh, book that I talked about, You're a Thing and I Love You. Um, what else do I want to mention? Any, any questions in the YouTube chat or the Discord member chat? I will gladly address in the next minute or two. I'm about five minutes over, so I really do need to stop. Gosh, I hope the recording is fine from today. We'll find out. I didn't check it in the middle, which I really should have. Did I mention the store? 
standard.tv slash coding training. I really, you know, I only want people to get stuff if they would enjoy it, but I do have a vested interest in people buying the hoodie because they'll only make them if enough people buy them. And I want one. I guess I could figure out a way to make my own. Everybody's so quiet today. How strange. Usually I can't keep up with the questions. Now there's just no questions. Well, thank you very much. Um, and I am going to sign off in about 48 seconds. I'm tired. Three hours is a long time to live stream. At least this isn't four hours. It would be nice if I had another hour to keep going to try to get a little further, but I think my brain is a little bit dead anyway. So time to do some other stuff. All right, thank you, everybody. I will see you next week. Uh, be on the lookout for edited versions of these live stream sessions as well as, hopefully soon, a new Coding in the Cabana video. See you in the Discord and all of that jazz. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son. This dot, this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, son, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. This I'm gonna say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. The forward to Cartesian coordinate song. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. So this is random, this is noise, Hurley noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between zero and 10. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I pick nine a lot, apparently. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. Boy, this is like Pearl and Noise performance art. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I think nine one. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four. Boy, this is like Pearl and Noise performance art. Seven, five, nine. Two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight. But with curly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, 
two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. This is this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearl pearly noise. Pearl pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. This is this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearl pearly noise. Pearl pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. This is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearl pearly noise. Pearl pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. This is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. This is this is pearly noise that is. Pearly noise. So this is pearly noise that is. Pearl pearly noise. Apparently. But with pearly noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Well, this is like pearly noise performance art. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's gonna be okay today. Dream is not broken, it has not frozen. This is a this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're gonna do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. And first thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and 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 kittens and